Hello, everybody, and welcome to yet another showcase session here at the Institute of Architects. As always, I'm your host, Michael Linke, and today I'm really proud to be joined by Peter Stanton, the Managing Director at Partridge, to take us through what Partridge can offer you as a member here at the Institute. So, Peter, welcome to the program. Great to have you with us. Thanks, Michael. It's great to be here, and I'm very much looking forward to talking through Partridge and how we can uh, offer our services to assist your members. We'll start a little bit about who Partridge is and where we've come from. We've been in business since 1982, and we have three offices located primarily in St. Leonard's in Sydney. We also have a growing office down here in South Bank in Melbourne, and we also have another small office up in Hamilton in Newcastle, New South Wales. We've got 70 people across all areas of our business, and we arrange those uh, people in teams to have this larger practice feel like a really small practice and a small company vibe. The services that we offer are structural, remedial, civil engineering, heritage, hydraulic, art, events, and many more. We won't bore you with those, we'll show some photos. A little bit about who we are and our values and what you could expect from us. Something that we uh, drum into all of our staff is our values of listen, engage, think and deliver. We have those and we hold those as values both internally and externally. So we like to listen to our clients and our architects, engage, understand the problem, collaborate, think through the problems, think creatively, and then deliver the solutions that are required. Um, we also have that internally in how we listen to each other, engage and respect, uh, think with, re with respect and care for each other, and then deliver internally as well. Um, along with that, we have some attributes that we um, like to encourage in our, in our team members. And the first one we'll talk about is experienced. Um, we're quite experienced. We've been in business for 40 years. And we do have a mix of young and old, as you could see in the photo there. We're not quite back in the 1880s, but uh, um, we do have some very experienced staff on team all the way through to our graduate engineers and our apprentice drafts people. Um, our experience is what allows us to innovate. We're backed by years or decades of experience, and we have a very strong and proven track record um, on innovation and ability to deliver. And that allows us to anticipate our clients' needs and apply the right resources to every project. The next attribute we'd like to, uh, for everyone to identify with our team members is clever. And we say that because it sound, and it's going to sound a little bit arrogant, but hey, um, we like to think that we can uncover solutions that uh, a typical engineer or others may overlook. And we do that by harnessing the right balance of our experience, understanding of uh, materials and nature and forces, and applying lateral thinking to allow us to deliver clever and efficient outcomes for all of our clients. Collaborative, we absolutely embrace collaboration and teamwork. We foster proactive collaborative partnerships with our clients where open communication underpins the success of every project. And courageous, we're gonna try and show a video here, but just before we do, courageous is a potentially a strange uh, word to associate with an engineer, but we challenge and we explore. While safety and reliability are core elements of our business, we expand our thinking and process at every opportunity. We explore new possibilities and challenge conventional wisdom and listen to our intuition. And this video will hopefully be an example of doing just that. Sweet. 
promise. Um, what you could expect from working with Partridge that we aim to exceed our clients' expectations through genuine collaborative partnerships, clever thinking and the encourage and the courage to explore new possibilities. So if your experience with us does not meet up to that, please give me a call. What is our motivation? Well, to get out of bed in the morning, myself and all of our staff, we just love solving problems with creativity, ingenuity and passion. And that's underpinned by also a desire to do great work with great people. We are a relational business and that's the kind of people and work environment we like to, to foster and involve in both um, our internal day-to-day -day life and also our day-to-day -day, uh, collaborations with our friends and business colleagues in architects and builders and um, everyone on the, on the team. So engineering is really quite elementary. Nature imposes its forces, gravity, wind, earthquake, water, so on. And then we build structure to resist the forces using various materials. The art of the engineer is simply to balance these two. Ancient engineers use trial and error to reach their designs, sometimes with wonderful success. The Pantheon, circa AD 12128, is still the largest unreinforced concrete dome in the world. Now we know the forces of nature and the strength of materials very well. We use calculations to find the correct balance, always adding buffers in between, which sometimes get called factors of safety. Now codes of practice help Australian standards, the NCC, and they prescribe values and methods that have been accepted by the building industry. By certifying that our designs are in accord with these values, we technically fulfill our legal obligation to society. However, just following code precepts does not automatically mean the overall design is correct. Because the codes do not consider all aspects, and this is not exhaustive by any mean, but such as aesthetics, construction sequence, stability, joints, sustainability, um, the way light enters the building, the end user, the connection between the spaces and volumes. It's, um, there's a lot of variables that need to be considered. Our job at Partridge is to find the best balance of these variables by applying our skills, knowledge, and a large amount of informed intuition to create an efficient, appropriate, and aesthetically pleasing design solution. Engineers are problem solvers, and every engineering problem has a number of solutions but only one or two great solutions. We believe to find these great solutions, we must interrogate what the problem is and then rely not only on our engineering knowledge of materials and analyses, but also the ability to think creatively. And I will just point out in that photograph there, that roof is dead straight, but in order to be able to capture the image, it's a fisheye lens and it makes it look a bit curvy, but please rest assured that is not a droop in the roof, but just a uh, photography um, anyway. <laughs> um, we also believe there are two types of engineering approaches, the ant and the eagle. Ant engineering diligently and painstakingly crawls through each detail of a design until the whole job has been visited. Eagle engineering flies over the top, observing it all, and then swoops down to closely examine key and critical details and do the due diligence on the critical areas. And we prefer to take the eagle approach, which allows us to come up with concept designs in a very efficient and collaborative manner, and then get down to the nitty gritty detail to ensure 
safety and integration of all of the components and considerations. Not only that, but we encourage a wider vision of structure within architecture, within urban design, and within the cultural life of the community. Because in the words of the structural engineer and architect, Falzo Khan, who was considered the father of a modern skyscraper, he said, a technical man or woman must be able to appreciate life. And life is art, drama, music, and most importantly, people. And finally, we also seek a certain beauty in our work, a beauty in our use of mathematics, geometry, and analysis, a beauty in finding insightful solutions, and a beauty in the built outcome. And again, to quote Buckminster Fuller, inventor, scientist, and engineer, who said, when I am working on a problem, I never think about beauty. But when I have finished, if the solution is not beautiful, I know it is wrong. So that's a little bit about who we are, our values, what you can expect from us, and our overall design philosophy that we encourage all our engineers to adopt and fulfill in their day to day lives. We'll go through a few of our prior projects that we've worked on over the, the last few years, and some of them go back quite a bit. And um, just so you get a bit of a flavor of uh, the type of work we do and and the outcomes we're able to achieve when we work collaborative with it, collaboratively with our architects. We get involved in unique projects. Um, we were in, did all of the flown and performance structures and ground performance structures for the Sydney Olympic Games opening and closing ceremonies, as well as the Asian Games in Doha 2006 which also led on to doing the um, Winter Olympic rings in Vancouver, um, which were in the opening ceremony when that snowboarder came down through the ramp and jumped through the middle of the rings. And interestingly enough, we tested 16 different types of fake snow just to get the right snow as it came out of the, out of the little charges. Anyway, a bit of trivia there. We've been involved in many film set and TV set designs. Um, we love doing the Mad Max Thunderdome. That was a little bit before my time at the company, but uh, not by much. Um, also the Wolverine Ice Village, for example, and that was done in a car park set up over the space of a month and then dismantled two weeks after filming ceased. We do cable structures, tension structures, and You'll notice in that photograph there, all of those columns, art columns, they're hung from the top and stopped short um, of the ground. We love doing complex staircases, complex geometry, things that stand up but look like they shouldn't. We're not afraid to get into glass either. In public art, we love um, public art because we get to work with sometimes undefined load cases and get to work with all manner of different materials. This one here, Halo, is a carbon fibre uh, ring which is supported by that steel arm that sits on a, a ceramic ball bearing and it's a kinetic wind activated artwork that spins around and oscillates slowly in the wind. Some magical piece that's up in cent one central park in Sydney. We also every year partner with Sculpture by the Sea to provide the certification for all of the installed sculptures. And we provide sponsorship and support for the artist to, to exhibit. Um, fabulous. Uh, piece of engineering work each year. It's not bad walking along the beach and signing off on sculpture along the way. We also do housing, a lot of architecturally designed housing. We love, we love that, the challenges and the complexity. And we always say, if you can design a house, then you can design anything and they're incredibly complex structures. 
and not all of them are concrete. We do timber, a CLT house, um, there's Blackheath Studio won a timber design award for a small small budget winner CLT, MB Kit Home or plywood and uh, snap fit joints. Um, alterations and additions, this was a, an old drill hall that had a modern extension and refurbishment on the inside, Tobias Partners, um, beautiful design. Um, larger houses, this was a, a big house in um, Vaucluse for Sayota and TKD with the local architects. Um, grand, very grand scale, um, tricky designs, um, large cantilevers and big spans. Lovely though. Um, a new build, uh, Bill Gola Beach House. This was a, an Olsen Kundig design. Um, working with uh, Olsen Kundig and getting their industrial and bits and pieces and gadgets and componentry all to work and detailing the, the fixings and getting that right was um, a lot of fun um, and led to some terrific outcomes hanging floors from roofs which hang off. Uh, chimneys and so on was um, a lot of a lot of fun in finding these complex load paths to get some fairly stunning outcomes there. And we also do multi-residential apartments and so on. We go up to around about ten stories and down three basement levels and do all the shoring and basement design as well. And a couple there, Wood Sandy Architects and and Burley Caden Halliday. Heritage and adaptive reuse. Um, this one's White Rabbit Gallery, smart design studio um, up at Chippendale in Sydney. Lovely structure and uh, creative space on the inside. Some real heritage where we restored this um, rotting and dilapidated uh, wool shed. And at Rouse Hill, it's become a little museum piece. Some sandstone and heritage restoration, the Abbey down in um, Eastern Suburbs of Sydney. We also do public domain works. In this one we did a lot of um, cable structures, tension, catenary wires, installation sequencing to get um, make sure we don't overstress the structure as well as in the temporary case as well as in the permanent um, tensioned situation. We do a lot of institutional buildings which we call institutional but education as well. Um, schools, John Cocking Architects for St Catherine's School, aged care facilities with Scalabrini Village with Thompson Adsett and Brickton Masters. Uh, we did Menangle Park Paceway with DTB Architects, uh, which had stables and grandstands and function um, and club spaces. Um, Knox Grammar School with Joan Sonter Architects. Uh, UTS Rowing Club in Haverfield with Hassel. Commercial buildings, um, we do these as well. Uh, this was uh, Volkswagen in Castle Hill uh, with Weir Phillips. Shell Harbour Workers Club with Caroline Pidcock and Richard Goodwin. This one's a hotel up in Yamba, Surf Hotel with Design King Company. We do building defects and expert witness reports. Some examples here of uh, waterproof membrane design detailing installation. Not that we do the installation, but we do the inspections and sign off that it's installed in accordance with our scope of work. Um, other building defects, well, a lot of them is waterproofing and facade cracking and facade issues. And some of those are fairly uh, uh, crispy masonry failures, but um, we, we do a we do a whole bunch. Um, Weather proofing and facade. Uh, this one we did the Chopard building um, refit with Reg and Matheson, and the that's glass onyx back glass as the facade element um, to get that backlit uh, expression. Did all the custom steel framing for that facade as well. And we also do quite a bit of work with uh, tilt and we'll get examples here of this one's Bunurong Memorial Park. We did the operable facade for this building 
where those that facade raises and lowers depending on uh, the weather. Um, and when in the lowered situation, it acts as a balustrade. And then when it's closed, it obviously seals it off as a function space. And um, another example that we did with Tilt was the UTS Building C reading rooms, those operable sun shades inside the twin skin facade. And so doing all of the componentry and uh, structure on those aluminium uh, louvers was a lot of fun and a lot of complex geometries. You can see every part was a unique size and length and so a lot of a lot of fun there and parametric design and, and analyses. So that kind of hopefully gives you a, an overview of what we do and, and a flavour for how we go about it and the type of people we are. Thanks, Peter, for that presentation. Some beautiful imagery in there and great to see a lot of our architect members uh, that you're working with already. Look, I've got a couple of questions that have come up through the presentation. First of all, look, all the projects in your showcase presentation seem to be architect-driven projects. Is that typical of the work that you do at Partridge? Yes, we're actually very deliberate in the work that we do and the work we choose to work and the projects we choose to work on. And all of the work we do is architecturally led and that's not typical of most engineering firms but we do that because we find that architecturally driven projects are far more interesting for us and far more personally rewarding so we tend to avoid any project that's not doesn't have an architect involved or is not led by uh, an architect in great design. to hear yeah okay thanks look now partridge provides uh, structural hydraulic remedial engineering services have you got any plans to offer more services in the future in a word no um we find that we offer structural hydraulic and remedial services and there's a lot of synergy between those um disciplines but in fact they're really all subsets of civil engineering so Structural, we work with materials, geometry and analysis to design structures. In hydraulic and stormwater, it's again materials. We've got um, water as a material and its properties. And remediation, we're diagnosing and maintaining defects in buildings and rectifying those materials. And there's a lot of crossover between each of those and waterproofing. And that allows us to bring a whole lot of information together and draw be able to draw upon these what are seen to be separate disciplines, but bring that in and for, bring an informed consideration to the structures we be, we design. So, for example, being able to draw on stormwater design and knowledge of waterproofing when considering structural elements and set downs really allows us to better collaborate with architects and add value into that design and collaboration phase in uh, preparing the concept designs right through to detailing um, uh, the projects that we work on. Are there any types of projects that perhaps Partridge doesn't work on? Well, yes, there is. We don't do volume housing and we don't do high rise structures. And we basically do any projects that are led by architects up to about 10 stories and any of them with more complexity, variety or challenges, the better. There's no such thing as a problem. There's just uh, opportunities for creative thinking and solutions. Sounds great. Um, my final question, you've shown us a huge range of different projects that you do work on. Uh, is there any job too small or any job perhaps too big? Well, there's no job too small. Uh, we work on small temporary works and single wall removals in units, all the way up to 50 plus million dollar developments. And um, where we would cap out, um, we probably would struggle with our business model and our personal motivators of the staff to really adequately service any project over about that 100, 150 million range for any one single job. Um, so it's kind of where we sit. Great stuff. All right. Well, thank you very much, Peter Standen at Partridge, the Managing Director. Thanks so much for spending some time with us here at the Institute, just taking us through what Partridge does. Just again, once more, remind us of your uh, website address so people can get in contact with you. It is www.partridge, P-A-R-T-R-I-D-G-E. .com.au
Great stuff. Thanks so much, Peter, for that. And hopefully those of you who have found this really interesting, by all means, if you are keen to engage with Partridge, don't hesitate to reach out to them, www.partridge.com.au. Massive thanks to you, Peter Standen at Partridge, for joining us on this uh, showcase session. I've been Michael Linke here at the Institute of Architects. Thanks very much for your company and look forward to seeing you at another showcase session very soon. Thanks very much.